so hello my dear students i hope you are you are doing well today uh, we are discussing about the metformin and uh, in this lecture we are going to discuss about the what is in uh, metformin and physiology and function of the pancreas pathophysiology and type of diabetes and um, type and classes of anti uh, diabetic drugs pharmacology of metformin in that we are discussing both the pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics of metformin so actually metformin that is sold under the brand name of uh, uh, glucophage among others it is an oral hypoglycemic agent that is belong to the big and white class of anti diabetic uh, drugs and it is used uh, to treat um, type 2 diabetes as a first line agent so as the function of this drug is indicating that this is somehow involved um, in maintaining the uh, concentration of glucose in the body so uh, before going in the depth of uh, the metformin how it maintain the glucose uh, concentration in the blood uh, we have to know about that uh, how in the normal condition in our body uh glucose um, concentration maintained and what are those organ that are responsible for maintaining the glucose concentration in our body so pancreas is an organ uh, that is a organ of both digestive system and the endocrine system and this organ um, this organ um having certain specific type of a cell that are present in the islet of langerhans so these uh, four to five type of cells are d cell uh, alpha cell beta cell they that releases certain hormones like alpha alpha cell releases um uh, glucagon beta cell releases insulin and then d cell releases somatostatin so all these hormone actually maintain the blood glucose level and then insulin is a main hormone or prime hormone that is mainly take, take part for the regulation of glucose con concentration or for maintaining the glucose concentration in the in our body or in our blood so insulin is actually 51 amino acid polypeptide hormone that is uh, um, composed of two polypeptide chain that are linked with our disulfide bridge so this a uh, hormone synthesized via ribosome in the beta cell cytoplasm and uh, from there it uh, translocate to the endoplasmic reticulum where it is further process uh, via the endoplasmic reticulum uh, uh, endopeptidase Uh, and it is process in pre pro insulin and then pro insulin and then c peptide and after the processing the insulin uh, stored in the insulin vesicles in the beta cell of uh, of islet of langerhans of the pancreas so from here the insulin release in the blood uh, uh, via the process of exocytosis after the cascade of depolarization uh, and the repolarization uh, and once uh, what happened once the insulin release from the vesicle in the blood so it travel uh, with the blood to the target tissues so virtually insulin act on the all type of organ that are present in the body because the all type of organ express insulin receptor however our skeletal muscle and the adipose tissues are those organs that are exclusively express insulin receptor so the insulin receptor are a glycoprotein type receptor that is having intracellular uh, tyrosine kinase activity so what happen when insulin reaches to the receptor it bind with the receptor and activate intracellular tyrosine kinase activity of these receptor so what happened then the receptor get phosphorylize phosphorylize and after phosphorylation um, this receptor phosphorylate other dime downstream substrate and activate them so after the activation of all these substrate what happened the substrate um, trigger glucose transporter that is glute glute 4 to translocate on this plasma membrane 
and embed there and open there. So after the translocation and embedding and opening of this GLUT4 receptor, glucose have chance to, um, to come inside the cell and, and goes in the uh, glycolytic pathway, that is the pathway of glucose metabolism that generate energy in the form of ATP. And this ATP used by the cell to perform different works. So that is how the insulin uh, maintain the blood glucose uh, level uh, in, in normal condition. But what happened in the diabetes, these beta cell may be uh, die because of the, some intrinsic or extrinsic factors and uh, either completely die or leave their function live perform their function so when they are completely die or decline their function what happened insulin do not uh, release does not release from this uh, beta cell so in, does not bind with the uh, insulin receptor and the glucose transporter uh, does not travel to the uh, cyto uh, to the plasma membrane and does not open and then glucose does not enter inside the uh, cell or the target tissues. So what happened in this condition, there is higher level of glucose in the, um, in the blood. So what happened with the higher level of glucose? Uh, so what happened in the higher, uh, when higher level of glucose present in the blood, uh, this condition, when the, the condition in that there is a, uh, a higher level of glucose present in the blood, as called as hyperglycemia. So when there is a higher level of glucose in the blood, see this glucose bind with the protein, cross-link with the protein, and, and appear as the dysfunction or declining the function of virtually all organ of the body. So how we can encounter with this problem, we have developed a lot, multiple type of anti-diabetic uh, anti the anti-diabetic drugs. So these drugs maintain or stabilize glucose concentration in the body. And these are belong to the different classes of drugs and metformin is belong to the big and white class of the drugs. Actually, these big and whites are the organic compound. And these big and, uh, big and white class of antibiotic drugs have developed on the organic skeleton. So there are multiple um, type of uh, anti-diabetic uh, drug that uh, comes under, under the big and white class, but uh, like the buformin uh, and fenformin, these are removed from the market because of the adverse drug reaction. However, metformin is one of most uh, one of the most popular um, uh, anti-diabetic drugs that are currently used uh, for the treatment of type 2 diabetes so now question is this how the metformin regulate the blood glucose level so metformin actually inhibit the glycogenesis gluconeogenesis or glucose production from the known glucose substrate so so uh, how it is uh, metformin inhibit the gluconeogenesis or glucose production. So when, uh, when metformin, uh, metformin uh, enter in the portal circulation after, uh, after, after the oral ad administration, metformin transport to the, um, uh, comes in the portal circu circulation and from there it is absorbed in the hepatocyte of the liver's liver that are the hepatocyte are the liver cell so um, metformin absorbed in the hepatocyte by the transporter that is OCT1 and it comes in the, inside the hepatocyte so after uh, transporting inside the hepatocyte uh, metformin inhibit mitochondrial complex 1 this is a component of uh, oxidative phosphorylation. And what does it do? It uh, generate energy in the form of ATP that is used up by the cell to perform the work. So as this um, mitochondrial complex one get inhibited, there is less ATP generated in the cell. And due to this ATP, less ATP, there is an increase um, 
production of AMP. So this increase AMP inhibit AMP kinase, activate AMP kinase. So this AMP kinase, uh, what does it do? It inhibit the glucose production by two pathways. In the one pathway, pathway one, it uh, uh, activate the transcription factor that are uh, that goes inside the nucleus and bind with all those receptors that are responsible for the production of the glucose or gluconeogenesis. And in other pathway, uh, the AMP kinase inhibit the MGT and uh, by inhibiting this, it increase the NADH and when then NADH increase in this cell, what happened? There is a higher conversion of pyruvate into lactate. So what happened? Why this lactate is, uh, means uh, pyruvate is converting? What is the consequence of conversion of pyruvate into lactate? Pyruvate is a intermediate of glycolytic pathway. If it will not uh, convert into lactate, it will go in the glycolytic pathway. Uh, uh, it will go into the um, uh, into the glycolytic pathway and then it will uh, form glucose via the glucose it will go into the gluco glucogenic pathway and form uh, glucose so that is how when metformin inhibit the mitochondrial complex 2 it inhibit the production of glucose from non carbohydrate source sources so um, this, uh, this, this was all about the pharmacodynamics of the metformin. Now we are uh, discussing about the pharmacokinetics of metformin. So metformin, uh, after oral administration, um, 50 or 60 percent of metformin available in the uh, plasma uh, or, or the target site. And however, the presence of food uh, can delay its absorption. And then, uh, and then, when uh, metformin administer, the very less amount of metformin uh, bind with the plasma protein. So when a drug is lessly bound with the plasma protein, they are not uh, not a specific protein with that um, metformin can buy and produce their action. So when the metformin bind with the less um, less metformin bind with the plasma protein, it means a more concentration of a drug is available to bind with its specific receptor. So it will give its adequate mechanism of action. And then uh, met, uh, metformin excrete from the body via the kidney, and its half life is 6.2 hours. And uh, there are several uh, adverse effects of metformin. And one of the most common is diarrhea and the vomiting. Uh, and other are less, uh, although the other are metformin can present other side effects, but they, these are less common. And met, metformin is contraindicated uh, in CCD disease, kidney disease, and liver disease due to the uh, Due to the due to the production of high amount of lactic acid, and when there is a production of high amount of lactic acid, uh, rather than its clearance from the body, so this condition we uh, call as lactic uh, acidosis. So these uh, these in these diseases, the uh, lactic acid uh, in the lactic uh, due to the lactic acidosis, the metformin is, is contraindicated. So metformin toxicity include lactic acidosis, renal function, and hypoglycemia because the excessive use of um, metformin can, can induce the hypoglycemia. So metformin toxicity include hypoglycemia and lactic acidosis and renal dysfunction. So these are the some references. So thank you very much for your kind attention.